Hi, this is Mark Samoyda with Curious Inventions. I want to go over moving literal numbers into registers. This is one of the most simple, basic things that we can start out with. And we already looked at it a little bit. We'll take the, our move command, or uh, the instruction, and the first argument would be the register we want to move into, and the second one could be a literal, like let's say hex, um, hex 10. Let's also do a move into, this time, register 1, but we won't use a hex number, we'll just use a regular decimal number 10. And I want to do that to show you the, the difference between the two. And, you know, why it's always important to understand whether you're working with hex or decimal numbers. Um, another thing we can do to populate a register is to go, let's say, R2, R1. This will just take the contents of register 1 and put it into register 2. So let's build this, make sure it's okay. Yeah, we got our one warning and debug it. And let's step through it. So here we're going to take our hex 10, which is shown here as hex 10, and put it into R0. We'll step through that, and R0 now has 10. That's fine. In our next command, we did a decimal 10. And as you can see, the assembler converted that into an A, which is correct. Decimal 10 is hex A. And we'll step over that, and we can see that R1 now has our A which is fine. And for our next command, we're going to move R1 into R2. And we'll step over that, and we can see R2 now has A, which is the same value as R1. So that's a good way to move uh, small numbers around, uh, but what if you wanted to move a full, large 32-bit number into a register? Let me fix this up a little, little bit. And say we wanted to move some kind of large number, uh, hexadecimal 1234.1234, which is a really random number. Um, we'll compile it and see what happens. And we get an error. That number is just too big for this move command. Um, immediate 1234.1234, immediate is the literal number that we're using. It's considered immediate mode when you use a little literal number like that. Cannot be represented by 0 to 255 into rotation. We'll get into rotations a little bit later. Um, I'll cover it briefly in this video, but there'll be a whole video or two on rotations. But just know that given this error, that number is just too big to move into R0 with the move command. So we're going to need to use a different command for that. Um, the best way to, to go about it, for at least for our simple example, is to create what's called a literal. A uh, literal is, like if you're used to C programming, it could be considered a constant or C++ constant. So the way you do that is you give it a name. Let's call it literal1. And equ is the directive for equals. And then we can put our literal value, O, X, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the way we would move this literal into a register would be with the LDR command, which stands for load register, LDR. And we're going to load it. We're not going to load it with uh, that, we'll get rid of that, but we're going to say equals our literal, lit1. Now this is another directive from the assembler, and let's just compile it, make sure we're good to go. Unexpected operator, line 2. Let's try it like that. There we go. Um, yeah, you, you wouldn't use the pound sign up here. So we have our literal equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And here we're loading it into R0. Now let's see what happens when we debug it. It actually 
changes things around a little bit and I'll show you exactly what's going on. So our LDR takes our literal one and look at the command. It looks nothing like what we did with our equals literal one. It essentially uses the PC, which is the program counter, to look up uh, the memory address. Um, now we still have our R0, like R0 is still going to be loaded with our LDR command. But what these brackets mean is we're going to use our program counter to find out where uh, that literal is. If we look at our memory, we can see our memory is, uh, you know, we start at memory location zero. And if we look at all the values, we can see our literal right here. So even though in our source code we defined it up on top, the assembler says, okay, well, programmers might like to see it up on top, but as far as being optimal assembly language goes, it's better to put it after the end statement. So if you look after the end statement, after our branch, you can see our branch, and then right after that we get our literal. So what we need to do is we need to load this memory location into, or the contents of this memory location, into R0. Now, the big question is, what does the PC have to do with that? Well, the PC is our program counter. And we'll go into this more in a future video, but an ARM processor is always looking ahead. And it's usually looking ahead by about two instructions. Um, so even though our program counter is on zero here, it's looking two instructions ahead. It's looking at past this one to this one at memory location eight, which is holding our literal value. Now the assembler knows this, and you're not expected to really know that as the programmer. As a programmer, you're most concerned with making sure you have the proper literal being set. But when you look at what's really going on with the assembler, it's saying, hey, the programmer, by the time we're executing this instruction here, the program counter is two steps ahead of us, and it's on eight right here. And you can see exactly that that is the literal. So it'll take this literal and put it into R0. We'll take a step, and you can see R0 is now populated with our literal. Um, I know that's a little confusing, and that's not the way other you know, programming languages work, but that's the power of assembly language. Like, you really see what's going on with the hardware. Uh, let me, or with these registers in particular, let me um, uh, put some more commands and we'll see what happens. Let's move into R1, we'll move R0. And we'll make sure that compiles and we'll debug that. Now, this looks a little bit more complicated, but let me explain. We're loading PC comma literal number four. <laughs> so what this does in this addressing mode is it takes the program counter and adds four to it. So as we saw previously, we're always looking about, you know, two instructions ahead. So we count one, two. But that doesn't hold one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, our literal. We have to add four more. This four right here gets added to the program counter to come up with this address, which has our literal in it. So if we step over that, we can see that it does get loaded. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four gets put into R0. So as a programmer, what you want to focus on is using this really valu valuable directive that the assembler gives us. Um, if you have to worry about where the program counter is at and adding you know, the proper offset for it based upon the amount of code underneath it and everything, I mean, that would just drive us crazy. So you know, we let the assembler work that out for us.
Okay, uh, there's one other thing uh, I wanted to go over as far as loading registers goes. Um, another way to get a literal, well, an another operation you can perform, let me type this up here. Let's say we wanted to move into R0, we'll move the value um, OX. Uh, let's just move the value 1. And let's move into R1. We're going to move R0. But another option we can do, like we know we can get R0 into R1 with the move command. We can also shift the bits a little bit. We can go um, LSL1. LSL stands for logical shift left, and the one means one bit. So let's just do a few of those. Move R2, R1, logical shift left. We're going to shift all the bits left by one, and we'll do it again. R3, R2, shift left, one bit. Let's see how this works. Uh, make sure it compiles or assembles, I shouldn't say compile. Um, and let's start stepping through it. So we have one in R0, that's fine. Now we have two in R1, let's see how that happened. We took R0, which was one, and we shifted it left one bit, which is essentially multiplying it by two, and we stored that in R1, so R1 has two. Now we're going to do it again. We're going to take R1, which is 2, and we're going to shift that left. So it should be 4 going into R2. And that's what happened. We have, now we have a 4 in R2. So what's happening with these commands, these move commands, is you got to remember we're working in assembler language here. So things have to happen fast. And if you can move a value and at the same time shift it, all the better. I mean, you need to think that way with uh, you know this ARM assembly language because you really want to get the most out of these processors and if you can do you know two operations you know basically a move as well as multiplying it or shifting it left by a certain number of bits I mean that's just great um, things just happen so much quicker because of that and it, it does a lot with uh, you know, the way you think when you implement algorithms. Like if you have shifting involved, you want to include that shifting within, you know, a move statement or, you know, a move command or any other command that allows for this kind of uh, shifting. Okay, and then I think we do it one more time. I'll step over that. Yeah, now we get 8 in register R3. Okay, so that's how you get values into registers. You can have small literals, or you can have, uh, you know, registers and move a register into a register and shift it if optionally. Or, um, you know, if you really have a, a large number you want to move into a register, you use the equal signs and the literal name. Uh, Normally, the convention is to define your literals up on top. Um, but, you know, as we saw, the, the literal actual value will be put after the end of the program.